our recommendation is to set up and start using an all digital workflow. A lot of these examples are going to come from um, our product because we've set it up to do this. It's already, you know, out of the box, ready to uh, help you work with clients remotely. If you are not a current client of ours, there's a lot of recommendations here that you can look at. It's kind of, again, common sense, uh, but it's not that hard to get a digital workflow running fairly quickly. Um, so let's get into it a little bit. All right, so let's start with client communication. Uh, many of our clients are uh, using our web platform, the social media sites, our email newsletter templates to communicate with their clients, their different policies, what they're, you know, if their office is shutting down, if, you know, how they recommend people send things in. Uh, we as a company are watching basically 24 seven, all the different uh, changes in policy. We expect a lot of different fiscal policies that will basically use the tax code as a major part of all of the, uh, the new legislation that's going to be coming out. But as far as communicating this, you know, sending an email out to your clients, giving the, you know, making the clients aware of what's going on, what your policies are, that you're here for them. Uh, we've done pop-up windows, uh, modal boxes on our websites. We've done the emails. We're doing a special section within our blog that will have everything about coronavirus as it comes out. Um, you know, today was the, the pseudo delay of tax season, though it's a 90-day delay of payment, but not necessarily the filing deadline. So we'll see if there's more clarity here uh, in the next couple of days on that. But uh, rest assured for our customers, our VIP customers, we are going to continue to push content through. Um, and, and make it very easy for you to communicate with your clients. Users that are in our 2.0 will start seeing a lot of actually marketing opportunities. We have um, an SBA loan. I think there, it's as of this time, there's 10 states that have special programs for SBA loans for uh, businesses that are affected, but I'm sure that's going to greatly expand. But basically there are a lot of issues that we are gonna help you communicate to that, to help your clients out through this time period. So a lot of that content uh, will be certain things that will actually help you engage clients um, and others will be more just reassuring, hey, this is our policy, this is how we're working with clients. Um, I know Katie, how, I mean, how many of these requests came through today just on sending the emails? Oh, too many to even know off the top of my head, probably more just by us doing this, uh, this webinar. But the big, the big point here too, I just wanna say is like, Reach out if you have any questions about how to do this or, or you know, best practices. We're, we're kind of all hands on deck, ready to support you where we can um, during this time. So just don't hesitate to reach out, set up a call. We're here for you. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to continue through. So let's now get into the digital workflow. Um, the first thing is we always suggest having an engagement letter around any um, client uh, work, you know, that, that you're starting up. It defines the um, agreement uh, with you and your client, and it, it provides you the ability also to comply with some other um, legalese, so to speak. So we do have an engagement letter built into our eSign uh, tool, and our users, we have, it's kind of a multi-part, so it, it has the engagement agreement uh, that details the services that the firm uh, provides, outlines the responsibilities, but it also has uh, the consent to use tax return information, which is obviously very important. You need to get that. And the privacy policy, which is mandated by federal law, all built into one. So if you are a current customer of ours, if you go into the e-sign section under templates, look under the engagement letter, you can easily set up and send out the engagement letter to get e-sign uh, without, again, you're not seeing the person in, uh, in person, so to speak. Uh, but this is one tool to start the process of a digital engagement. So definitely use it. Um, and if you need any assistance, we have some help desk uh, knowledge base articles on this, and we'll kind of walk you through how to use the eSign tool. If you are, um, after the engagement letter is sent out, right, and now you're ready to start working, uh, we suggest using a digital tax organizer. Again, I don't care what tax organizer you're, you're working with, but this will help streamline your client interview process, especially since you're doing it digitally, and maximize your client legal deductions. So the thought process here is if you, you know, we're doing still your personal interviews. There are certain processes you probably have in place, you know, that you just know by the back of your head how you ask questions to open up different opportunities, find things about your client's life in the last year, you know, what they're doing, uh, identify perhaps some tax planning opportunities. Um, our tax organizers that we have, we have a four-page, six-page, eight-page, and a business version. They're all PDF form-filled, so it's easier for clients. It's really hard to do this online. 
in a, in a, like on a mobile phone or something. So it allows them to, to download the file and to up to update the information and then pass that on to you. So it's a great way to kind of supplement the digital workflow and get, uh, I think, better results. So one thing that we're seeing even in our own client base um, is, oh, just email us the documents. Um, you know, email is not secure. Obviously, the tax and accounting profession is targeted by hackers, fishers, uh, phishing emails for a reason, right? Um, it's because a lot of times they fall for it. And once you compromise an email, there's a lot of data. If you have your client's tax return information or financial statements or whatever in there, that is really dangerous. So whatever you're using as a portal, whether you're using uh, you know, a Dropbox or something like that, or a tool like ours that's more personalized and organized for each individual client, use a secure portal. You need it to be HTTPS secure, which is an SSL uh, certificate, which allows you to securely share encrypted messages and documents. So obviously, our clients that are using our portal already have access to this. Uh, some of our clients, you, you know, prefer a third-party pr product. I don't care. My whole goal here is to make sure that you are relying on this portal during this time. Do not get messy and start sending email files and don't let your clients, some people are saying, oh, just email it to me. You don't wanna do this. Um, so basically clients can collect digital copies of their documents now. Um, our app allows, you know, if they have their mobile phone, they just take pictures and upload them one by one. It's, it's that easy. Um, and one of the, the advantages of a tool like ours is it's very tough to manage hundreds and hundreds of clients and traditional tools, right? So ours is, it welcomes each client individually. It gives them a view of their information and what your communication is specifically for them. They don't have to, you know, jump in and try to find it. And from your standpoint, you know, it's, it gets really hard to organize hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients and communications in tools that aren't set up for this type of uh, application. So. Um, again, use secure messaging and document communication. Uh, this is kind of an optional thing, but it's obvious that you can do phone calls, phone interviews, so you can still have interviews, or you can use video conferencing. Um, there's a number of tools that allow you to take in-person interviews online. Um, you know, so pick the tool that you like. There's a reason Zoom stock is skyrocketing. Um, you know, Skype, FaceTime, if it's you know, someone on, a, a, on an iPhone, there's a bunch of different tools that you can use to do a video conference uh, interview. And you can do it very similar to your existing interviews. Um, you can use the video tool or just the audio. You can do a screen share type of environment. But I know a lot of you are doing this. I'm just throwing this out for those that haven't jumped in uh, to this type of technology yet. Um, so then what's next, right? So I'm not getting into the way you currently work. Um, we are gonna have a section on remote here, but I'm not getting into the actual, the workflow, how you're processing the, calculating the tax returns, how you're going back and forth. Um, I'm just going more on the digital workflow of how you're dealing with the client now through this process. So uh, you process the return and provide the client a preview copy. So the IRS requires you to still provide your client with a copy of the return before you e-file. I know many, many don't do this. And that's what the IRS requires or they say you should do. Um, so within a portal, it's very easy. Hey, here's your completed return. Please check it out. Uh, obviously, they're protected through the security of the SSL. They can look at the return. If everything looks good, they can reply to you within um, the portal and say, hey, I reviewed my return. This looks great. You know, let's, let's go ahead and, and file this thing. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, I'm just going step by step the way this should work. Um, at that stage, once you're ready to file, um, you now have the issue where, okay, uh, the IRS requires knowledge-based authentication of taxpayers before they are allowed to sign the IRS Form 8879. So in our platform, in, under the e-sign, under templates, you would look up the e-file signature authorization with KBA. Um, what happens is our system will kick out a email. If there's a spouse, it will send two emails. But basically, before the client sees the actual 8879 um, e-file signature sign off, they're going to have what we call knowledge base questions. So, you know, is, is one of these your address? Um, you know, was one of these a car that you've owned? So there's, there's a bunch of different ways that, and we have AI that's backing up ours as well. So if they put in certain information, we have a score that automatically based on certain criteria I'm not going to get into already says, hey, this is most likely this person. And we know this by IP address and a bunch of different things. Um, but it's a very simple process. Once they authenticate who they are, 
they then will get the e-file signature request and be able to uh, finish that. So the IRS requires this. Many are not using it. Our tool has it built in. So if you're not a customer of ours, uh, you definitely need to look into KBA and e-filing uh, or e-signature for the IRS form 8879. So obviously at that point now you're ready to file a return. So complete your e-file process. Um, many pros are also collecting online um, uh, payments, so eliminating a paper check. And uh, and we use, most of our clients are using PayPal, PayPal or Authorize.net, but it's something you may want to look in if you are not taking payment currently through uh, a tool like that. 